Good evening and welcome to the service of worship from the First Presbyterian Church of Titusville. Some of you may remember that years ago Jack Benny once said that the most sensitive nerve in the human body is the one that leads to the pocketbook or the wallet. Well, that may be true, but it's also true that Jesus talked more about money than about any other subject with the possible exception of the kingdom of God. So as the apostle Paul puts it, this evening I'd like to talk with you about the matter of the money. And as always, I'm so very glad that you have joined us. Says the psalmist, praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So let us worship the God who showers us with both benefits and blessings. I invite you to join us in this morning's responsorial prayer by singing the refrain following each petition of the prayer. Thank you. Creator God, Creator God, you have filled the world with beauty, so open our eyes to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness. Gracious God, you have made both heaven and earth and all that is good. And in Jesus Christ, you show us that the secret of joy is a heart set free from selfish desires. So help us, O Lord, to delight in simple things and to rejoice always in the richness of your bounty.
O oh God, you are rich in love for your people. So show us the treasures that endure, and when we are tempted by greed, remind us of your lavish mercy shown to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Congregation, please be seated. We welcome you to this service of worship on this Stewardship Sunday. Uh, you all set your clocks back. That's good. Good to have you here. Just a few announcements to which I would direct your attention as you reach, if you will, for the pew pad. It's there to your left. Pass it along. We'd like to have a record of your having worshiped with us on this lovely, sunshiny morning. Again, several announcements, very quickly. All of them, of course, are important, but just a note that our Alzheimer's Caregivers Group will be meeting this coming Tuesday at 2.30 in the Emerson Parlor. Please come if you need that kind of support and invite your friends as well. Also on page 9, as noted there at the bottom of the page, this is the last opportunity to purchase a T-shirt or a sweatshirt from our Presbyterian women There'll be, I believe, am I not right, Terry, a table immediately outside the door uh, there on the uh, south side of the church where you can place your order. Also, our Presbyterian Happy Feet relay team is getting ready for this spring's event, and you see information about that on page 10. Also, Triple F is planning a Thanksmas party, and those of you who participated last year will remember what great fun it was. We invite you to put that on your calendar, Sunday, September 8th. We plan to do that once again, and you may then read the pleasant message from Kay Vogus, who, as I announced last Sunday, went to help her sister and broke a vertebrae and is now recuperating herself. And finally, I would, as I do every Sunday, direct your attention to our prayer concerns for the morning. We pray for Audrey Cole, she's at Golden Living, at least temporarily. Tom Tarr is back again in St. Vincent's Hospital, but I talked this morning with his nurse and he's doing well. Also, we're happy to share with you the good news that uh, Christy Snyder and her husband gave birth. She gave birth to a son, Jacob Ray Snyder, who will appear on Christmas Eve as the baby Jesus, along with dad and mom as Joseph and Mary. So we're grateful not only for the birth, but that those crucial spots in the Christmas Eve tableau <laughs> are filled in a timely way. And finally, of course, you're all aware of the sad passing of Scott Lennon. These funeral services will be at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning in the United Methodist Church. Thank you, it's good to have you here. Lay up your treasures in heaven, O oh people, lay up your treasures in glory. In heaven, O oh people, lay up your treasures in glory. Your treasures in this world will fade away, but the things of the Lord will last forevermore. forevermore. Well, the Lord looked down and saw the people there, tied up in worry and burdened with care. He said, See, first the kingdom and In heaven, O oh people, lay up your treasures in glory, where nothing in this world can take them away. Oh, listen, people, hear the Master 
does it, but Kevin always comes up with the perfect anthem, the perfect anthem for Stewardship Sunday. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, choir. Now, hear the inspired word of God as it comes to us this morning from Paul's letter to the ancient imperial city of Rome. I want you to know, dear friends, says Paul, that I had planned to come many times before, but again and again something would prevent me. But I planned to come so that I could work in your midst and see good results, just as I have seen good results in other Gentile churches. And then he adds, for I owe a great debt to you and to everyone else, both to civilized people as well as the uncivilized, to the educated as well as to the uneducated. So to the fullest extent of my ability, I am ready to come also unto you and there to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God for this, his holy word. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, for the good gifts of life and love, for entrusting into our hands, our hands, your most precious creation, and all of the manifold blessings thereof, we are more than grateful, O oh Lord. And humbled by your trust, by your expectation that we will tend these gifts faithfully. So with humility, O oh God, we respond with our promise to be generous with that with which you have blessed us, generous for the sake of those in whose midst we pray today, generous for the sake of generations yet to be born, Generous for the sake of people whose names we will never know and whose faces we will never see, but who are in desperate need of our generosity. We pray this day, O oh God, that we might be claimed anew by your love and transformed by your overwhelming kindness. So grant us courage, we ask, and instill us with a passion for tenderness that we might awaken anew to the demands that gratitude places upon us. For this we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Do you remember last year when we talked about offering in Sunday school, what we do with our offering? Do you remember? What do we do with it? Okay, but we specifically got something last year. Exactly. We bought special farm animals, didn't we, for people that needed them. Well, the adults take very special offering every week. Every week. And they pledge to give so much money to the church, which is very important. And why would it be important? Well, I have some things. First of all, this light bulb reminds me that we have electricity in this church, and that costs money. So hold on to that. I have to put it back in my lamp so don't break it. Okay. So electricity. And did you notice it was kind of cold today, this morning? Yeah. What did you notice in the sanctuary? It's nice and warm. Yeah. Well, that costs money, isn't it? What? Well, it could be, but it's gas. So we have to pay a heating bill. And ask your mom and dad at home how much their heating bill is in your house on a monthly basis. And then think about how big this church is. And we have to heat it, okay? Among other things, we have to... Uh, this represents maintenance. Now, maintenance, they fix a lot of things. They fix a lot of things. Kelly and her committees, committee people, they fix a lot of things, and it costs money to do that. So you hold on to that, but don't swing it at anybody. Okay? <laughs> I'm surprised I have to remind them of that. Okay, now, we buy Bibles for Sunday school. We have, every time you come to Sunday school, we have curriculum, okay? So the special curriculum that we buy, everything costs money. We also do mission work, just like we do in Sunday school. The church does mission work to special organizations and special people. All of this costs money. And what the adults do is they get these special envelopes after they pledged, and they put their money in those envelopes, or they just put cash in the, in the uh, when we go to do our offering, or it comes right out of the bank, kind of magically, okay? But the point is, actually, it's hard work. And people earn this money, and they give it to the church. And so they can take the money out electronically. It's kind of interesting. But remember, it takes a lot of people. It takes people that are willing to give so that we can have our children's programs, so that we can have our Sunday school programs, so that we can have our adult Sunday school so that we can heat the building, have electricity to put the lights on. And one other thing I want to mention is 
we have a few staff people here. Okay, see that? That's the list of the staff people that work here. And they work very hard, I like to think I do. And I know Dr. Cressman does. And I know everybody on that list does. And they need to be paid because they work hard. So all the money that comes into this church is needed to do God's work. So each dollar that you put in, each dollar that everybody out in the congregation puts in is very, very important. And so we need to pray about that on this Sunday of stewardship. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this church and the great work that it does in this community and in the world. And we ask blessing and we ask that people are generous. In Jesus' name, amen. Congregation, please be seated. 
As the choir moves into the pews, I would like to share with you the note that uh, Patty Payton brought forward, uh, you saw, uh, as the children were gathering for the children's moments. Uh, Dorothy Hipwell, who was our secretary for many, many years, quite a number of decades, beginning in the 1950s and continuing into the 1980s, and who reached, I believe, if not reached very close to her 100th birthday, passed away at Golden Living yesterday. I'm sure that uh, funeral arrangements will be made public, and when they are, I know that you will all want to uh, keep. In the meantime, their family, Dorothy's family, she has one son left, as many of you know. Uh, her daughter died very tragically in an automobile accident in the 60s. Uh, she was just a teenager at the time. And then her son, Rick, passed away suddenly and unexpectedly Christmas Eve quite a number of years ago now. And Dorothy's husband, Adrian, of course, predeceased her. So I invite your prayers for Dorothy's family. Her son, Ron, lives on the West Coast. I have not yet heard from Ron concerning any plans for memorial service, but I'm sure that such plans will be made. Dorothy was a very special lady. And all of you who knew Dorothy would certainly agree. So, on behalf of the family, thank you in advance for the prayers that I know will be on your heart and in your mind. Two men were shipwrecked on a remote uh, desert island in the Pacific somewhere. They weren't altogether sure where, and after the, one of them had uh, reconnoitered, he came back and reported to the other, no food as far as I could determine, no, no fresh water as far as I could see, nothing to eat, no shelter, sun day after day beating down on us, maybe even cannibals. We might as well give up right now. We're going to die, so perhaps the sooner the better. Whereupon his companions said, not so dreary, my friend. Happens that I make uh, $250,000 every month. I tithe of that with regularity to my church. Trust me, the church treasurer will find me. <laughs> well, Lisa Bodemer is a very able and capable lady. If any of us were lost, I'm sure she would find us too. But it's no secret that this is Stewardship Sunday. Some of you will recall Jack Benny, for the rest of you, I'm sorry you never knew him. You have to be a special age to remember Jack Benny. Once, once said that the most sensitive nerve in the human body is the one that leads to the pocketbook or the wallet. And that may be true, but the truth is that Jesus spoke more about money than about any other subject, with the possible exception of his speaking about the kingdom of God. And so this morning on this Stewardship Sunday, I'd like to talk with you about what Paul refers to as the matter of the money when he writes to the Corinthians in his second letter. I owe a great debt, says the Apostle Paul, to the people of the great imperial city of Rome. And as we think about that, I think that uh, we could identify with that on a multiplicity of levels. I think of your journey, my journey, certainly all of us are dependent and owe a great debt to friends, to family, to teachers, to those who have picked us up in moments when we were down, who have sympathized with us when a word of sympathy was appropriate, who have propped us up when we thought we were about to fall. Certainly we owe a debt to all such as those. And and of course, very uh, existentially, there are bills to be paid for the Cressman family. It's a mortgage payment due the first of every month. And, and I'm sorry to have to report to you that that uh, 2002 envoy that I thought was going to make it to at least 250,000 miles, a couple of weeks uh, took it in for what I thought was going to be a you know, routine oil change and check, and uh, they called me at about 10 o'clock and said, you better come down here. This is critical. You never like to hear that, do you, Joe? This is critical. In any case, a major part had rusted just about completely through. He said, this car is no good. You drive this car, the real wheels are going to fall off, and you're going to be killed. You need a new car today. So... 
Uh, so now their car payments, I think they're going to be about the 24th of every month. And then, of course, if you have uh, children in college, you know what tuition bills are, are like. If you don't have them there yet, uh, uh, you'll find out. If you have had them, uh, I know you will utter a prayer of gratitude that the, uh, those payments are passed. In any case, then, too, we talk about the national debt. And until the past few weeks when we've been caught up in concern over just how we're going to get the Affordable Care Act to work through the website set up to make that all possible, we've been talking, and rightly so, about the national debt, just as you and I cannot borrow indefinitely without making repayments so our federal government needs to do the same. So the words of Paul, I am a debtor, or in the living Bible paraphrase from which I read, I owe a great debt, they resonate with us. And this morning I'd like to organize my thoughts about stewardship through that passage. And I think we need to begin by facing the reality of our indebtedness. We speak of men and women as being self-made. We say, well, he's a self-made man or she's a self-made woman. And you understand that uh, none of us is self-made in the fullest extent, at least. Maybe you've heard the story about the man who had managed to amass a great deal of wealth and he was invited to speak before a group of businessmen. And after he had talked a little bit, he said, I have a confession to make. Uh, Earlier in my life, I was a compulsive gambler. I literally won and lost tens of thousands of dollars. And it got to the point where out in Las Vegas, I'd put the last bit of money I had into a slot machine and lost it. I was going to break down in tears, thought that might not be a good idea there on the casino floor. So I thought, well, I'll go to the men's room. I'll go into a stall. I'll cry my eyes out there. So he went into the men's room and observed that he had to have a dime. This obviously is from a long time ago. And he, as he was rummaging about in his pockets, uh, trying to find something, he knew it wasn't there, but uh, hoping somebody might feel sorry for him. And sure enough, a fellow who was washing his hands said, you need a little change. Here's a dime. To which uh, the speaker replied, I always pay my debt, so if you'll give me your name and address, I'll, I'll, and it, but don't bother. It's just a dime. No, I always repay my debts. If you give me your business card, I'll see that you're repaid. And so the fellow did, left. And he said, I went into the uh, stall, and I noticed that the person who had been in the stall before me had left the door ajar. So I put the dime back in my pocket, had a good cry, got up, washed my hands, washed my eyes, went out to leave the casino, saw a dime slot machine, couldn't resist putting that last dime in the slot machine. I hit the jackpot and I, I couldn't lose it anything. I put more money, kept jackpot after jackpot. Every game I played, I won. And pretty soon I had amassed a small fortune. I invested it wisely. I then bought a business. I gave up my gambling habits. And if I could just find that man, I would give him half of all that I have. Whereupon someone in the audience raised their hands, not exactly a congregation, and the audience raised their hands and said, hey, but you told us uh, he gave you his business card. Oh, not that man. I said, it's, it's the man who left the door ajar. Uh, well, it's no secret. Uh, you know people, I know people, all wrapped up in money, possessions, tend to forget about other people. And Paul is speaking about that. I discovered in putting this together that there is a Horatio Alger Society. Horatio Alger was the author in the middle of the uh, 19th century who wrote the books about uh, boys disadvantaged through uh, some brave, courageous, generous deed rise to, to extraordinary heights. But apparently there is this Horatio Alger Society and they recognize people who have accomplished what uh, they refer to as the American dream. But you read their stories and every single one of their stories 
involves their being given, so to speak, a leg up by somebody or other, a scholarship to help them pay for their education, a promotion when they least expected it, a friend who loaned them money when they were in dire straits. The truth is that we are all debtors in one way or another. As I look out into this congregation, I think it would be true to say that everybody here was born an American. Simply by virtue of having been born an American, an accident of birth. Look and think about what we have inherited. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, and on and on and on. I remember years ago, one of our contramans said to me, we were talking about joining the church, and I asked her why she wanted to join the church. And I'll never forget, this was her answer. She said, it runs in the family. And then she proceeded to explain that her great-grandfather and her great-grandmother had been members of this congregation. Her grandfather and her grandmother, members, her dad and her mom, members. It runs in the family. If you have been raised in a Christian family, what a special gift and what a powerful heritage. I can remember as a child overhearing my dad pray for me by name. It made a lasting impression on his knees by his bed, praying for me and for my sisters and each of us by name. I remember my mother, before I could yet read, reading to me from, uh, yeah, you have to be a certain age to remember, Aunt Charlotte's book of Bible stories for children. No, you're too young. But if you're my age or older, you may remember Aunt Charlotte's Bible stories for children. My mother would read, explain the stories, and the stories of implication for me. If we've been shaped by the Christian family, what an incredible gift. So... We are all debtors, without exception. We went to schools that we did not build. We borrow books from a library that we did not pay for. We swim in swimming pools that we did not construct. We sit under the shade of trees that we did not plant. We worship in this sanctuary and attend classes of all sorts and activities in this building that uh, was a gift of previous generations. A couple of weeks ago, the industrial appraisal arrived, and you may know what an industrial appraisal is. If this building were to be wiped away through, heaven forbid, some catastrophe, fire or earthquake or, or whatever, you have to have an industrial appraisal. We have our insurance agent right here with us. Am I right, Dick? You have to have an industrial appraisal so that you might be reimbursed. Uh, can you guess... Can you guess what this year's industrial appraisal came in at? This would be the cost if the building were destroyed completely of rebuilding it. Just think of a number. Think of a number. And I'm curious if any of you come close. The number in this year's industrial appraisal arrived just a couple weeks ago. $13 million. Gift from a previous generation. So we are all debtors. And what is the primary requirement for one who is in debt? It is, of course, to repay the debt. And, of course, that is impossible. How can you or I possibly repay our nation for what it means to be a citizen of this great country, the freedoms to which I alluded earlier? How can I possibly repay my mom and my dad for putting up with me when I was a, a snotty-nosed kid, for want of a better term. How could I possibly repay my mom and dad for standing beside me and calling the doctor in the middle of the night when I was six years old and they thought I had polio, but instead it was a terrible case of pneumonia? How could I possibly repay them for the love they showered upon me day after day, my mother reading to me as I recovered? How could I possibly repay them for paying for my education so that I could graduate debt free? How could I possibly, how could I possibly repay my wife for putting up with me for all these years? You probably never have your moments, Sid or Phil, 
I have my moments. She puts up with him. How could I possibly repay my children for marrying such absolutely wonderful people so that we've embraced them into the family and feel just as comfortable with them as if they were our, our own children. They are, in a sense, our own children. How can I repay God himself who gave me and to you the gift of life, who picks me up when I'm down, who whispers in my ear when I go astray, your sins have been cast as far from you as the east is from the west, and I will give you strength to begin again. How could any of us? I cannot. You cannot. None of us can. The only thing we can do is to give our hearts in grateful commitment, our hands in willing service, and our resources to strengthen this church in its endeavors to reach out and impact for good and for God this community and beyond this community to the nation and the world. We together can do these things. And that's what stewardship is all about. And I see you doing it on a regular basis. I see you visiting people in skilled nursing homes and in assisted living facilities. I see you, I hear about you writing notes to people who need an uplift, sympathy notes, notes of encouragement. I see you reaching into your pocketbooks to help people who are in need. I see you doing that. I see you offering scholarships to young men and women who desperately need them in order to go to college. This is not a perfect church, but I would say to you that we are trying our best to be like Jesus in so many ways. And we do this, and we do it gladly, because we realize that when it comes to the bottom line, we are all living in the red. We are all in debt. Well, by way of conclusion, Becca Fink tells a story about a young man by the name of Bill. Bill happened to be the son of a very wealthy family. It happened that they lived in a very wealthy community just outside of New York City, and it was the, it was the custom, it was the tradition in that community where he lived that upon graduation, every young man, every young woman would get as a gift a brand new car. Sorry, Toby. <laughs> but in any case, in this community, that's the way things went. And so uh, Bill and his dad, as graduation day approached, they went shopping for just the right car. And after weeks, they found it. Uh, dad did not buy it right away because it was going to come as a graduation gift. At least that's what Bill was expecting. And so the great day arrived, and when he awakened, he thought, well, maybe that new car is in the driveway. No, it wasn't in the driveway. All day long, he kept looking out the window, thinking, certainly they're going to deliver that beautiful red sports car that Dad said he was going to buy for me. No. The graduation exercises were in the evening. He couldn't think about anything the speaker said. All he could think about was how when he got home, he was positive that red sports car was going to be right there in the driveway waiting for him. They arrived home. No car. After a little bit, his uh, father handed him a wrapped package. Bill thought, surely inside this package there will be the keys to that new car. But when he opened it up, when he opened it up, it was a Bible. And Bill was very angry. He said the kind of things to his dad that no child should ever say to their dad or their mom. And then he stomped out of the house, and his dad never saw him Again, But a few years later, after he had gotten word that his dad had passed away, he returned. And one evening soon thereafter, seated at his dad's desk, going through some of the possessions that he knew would soon be his, he came across the Bible. Only this time he thumbed through the pages 
And there right between the Old Testament and the New Testament was a cashier's check dated for the very date on which he'd graduated and written in the exact amount of the car that they had picked out together. Well, that's oftentimes, am I not right, the way it is with us. God showers upon us blessings upon blessings. Oftentimes, we do not recognize the blessings when they come because they are perhaps not wrapped the way we had anticipated them, because they're not in the shape we had expected, because they're not of the size we had imagined they would be. But of this, I am absolutely sure, you and I, all of us together, are living in the red. We are all in debt. And our opportunity to repay comes this week in the form of a stewardship packet. Uh, we'll mail these out tomorrow. Well, some of you are familiar with the process. Inside the packet, you'll find a letter written by the chairman of this year's campaign, Lisa Bodemer. And you'll also find a little brochure about uh, giving, similar to the one that is in the bulletin this morning. You'll find a budget very carefully prepared by our session and its various committees, a budget for the year 2014. And you'll see inside a pledge card. It is our hope that you will read these things carefully, that you will pray about them, that you will fill out the pledge card, that you will come next week so that on Commitment Sunday we can dedicate our pledges together. If you can't be here, you'll perhaps drop it in the mail. And that you will do this by way of saying, thank you, through this church, Thank you, God, for the countless ways, ways beyond measure, in which you have blessed me, my family, this congregation, this community. Amen.
Let us pray. O thou from whom to be turned is to fall, to whom to be turned is to rise, and in whom to stand is to abide forever, grant us in all our duties thy help, in all our perplexities thy guidance, in all our dangers thy protection, and in all our sorrows thy peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. God is with us at all times, on all occasions, and under all circumstances. So in the week before you, I hope that you sense God's presence in your life. God bless you, and please join us again next Sunday. originating from the birthplace of the oil industry, we are the stream.